Hello, I'm Cynthia Brooks from Fire and Glory International Ministries. I'm grateful to be before you. I'm grateful for this year that God has brought us through another year. We are almost finished with this year. And, and I thank God that we were able to come through with wisdom. God has given us greater wisdom than we had before if we are uh, concerned about the things of God. We, have, we are watching distraction after distraction. But, you know, God hasn't called us to worry about those distractions. He do want us to take note. So we take note of the things that's happening on this earth of, you know, the rivers drying up, you know, particularly uh, the Mississippi, you know, and the, and the rivers out west. But they're drying up all over the world. Canals are drying up. Ponds are drying up. And we don't, we don't have a clue what's going on except we know this. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we know who holds tomorrow. So we stand in faith on the fact that the great and living God will bring us through. I pray that through all the things we've suffered and gone through, that you are paying attention to the fact that family, the gifts that God has given us, family and friends are so important. I pray that you are planning time to get together with your family or friends during this time of Thanksgiving where we give God thanks first. We give great gratitude to, to God for what he's done in our lives, what he's given us in our lives, how he has sustained us, how he's brought us through. There's been so much sickness in these past couple of years. And, you know, I myself, I didn't have, you know, you know that kind of sickness of, of, of the... Um, the pandemic, I didn't get that kind of sickness, but I had another problem that I had, I had, and, and, uh, you know, I had to go to the emergency room. Uh, I thought I was, you know, my blood pressure was just like insane. And, and so, uh, but I weathered that and God is good. He's good. And so, you know, whatever he brings us through, cause I didn't come through by myself. I got enough sense to know that, that God brought me through that, that little small storm. But he's bringing us through every storm, and we have to understand that. And so I want to continue on what I was speaking about before, and that is the subject of when we go through hard times. You know, as I pointed out before, we go, you know, Job went through hard times, but God was orchestrating that. He allowed Satan to have a have his way with him. But I want you to think about even when it comes to us. And in 2 Corinthians 14, in verse 16, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Listen, again, I'm 70 years old, and this sister don't feel like she used to feel when I was younger, 10 years ago. I, I you know, I remember when my mom was alive, and she's, oh, this hurt, and I laugh, and every, you know, maybe two days later, it's something that hurt, and I, you know, I said, mom, something always hurt you, and she said, keep living, you'll find out, well, you know what? My mom was absolutely right. Things hurt that didn't hurt before. And I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I laugh at it now because my mother warned me, you will have pain. And so this, this outward, this outward body is, is perishing. This, this little temple here, this is perishing. And, and, and it's okay if to put an outward man to perish. Because here's what it says. Yet the inward man is being renewed Day by day, my spirit, man, has been renewed by Holy Spirit. Day by day, I'm learning things I never knew. We all learn. God is continuously revealing himself to us. I, I pray that people don't think, well, you know, I got it all. No, you don't. No, you know you don't. God is continu continuously revealing himself, his nature, and his wisdom to us. And so it says, Verse 17, for our light affliction. Now, God calls all of these things that we suffer light affliction. These are light afflictions. You might say, well, I had cancer. That's not something awful. Well, it, to God, it was a light affliction. Oh, well, you know, my house, my house burned down. A flood took my house away or something terrible happened. To God, that was a light affliction. Whatever you went through, that was a light affliction when it pales to compare it to eternity, that was indeed a light affliction. But it says, for a light affliction, which is but for a moment, what is a hundred years to God? Nothing. It's nothing to God because he's eternal. He's in, he's in Cairo's time. A hundred years means nothing to him. 
100 years mean a lot to us. But I'm going to tell you, in 30 years from now, I'll be 100. And you know what? This time seemed like it's short. I mean, when I look back over my life and, and I think about all the things I went through, good and bad, it feels like I can't believe that much time has gone by. And especially when I talk to my, my, my grandchildren and my children, of course, my grandkids think I'm just completely ancient. You know, you, you like the ancient of the days. But, you know, you think about these years that pass, so many years, you think, it really don't seem to be that long. Maybe when you're young, it do. But when I'm looking back now and I and I remember something that happened and I was talking to my children or, or someone and they said, oh, that was 40 years ago. I'm like, 40 years? It, it didn't seem like 40 years. It doesn't seem like 40 years to me. This time is like a vapor and it passes faster than you want. Don't be distracted by the different issues that's coming on the earth right now. These are distractions. It is distractions when we take uh, people who are quote unquote famous or, or, you know, somebody big in the eyes of the world and we get all wrapped up in what they're saying or some philosophy that they have or whatever. Don't get caught up in that. Those, those are just vain things. Don't get caught up in that. You know, the real thing is what's really happening. What time is it? Uh, as my as as the song you say, what time it is? What time is it in 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 the scope of history? Are you paying attention to what is happening out here? Not what man is saying, but the signs in the heaven, the signs on the earth, and the signs under the earth. Are we paying attention because the signs are here? The signs that Jesus told us about, we are watching these signs. And I'm not saying this is it, he's coming back tomorrow, but he has signs. You know, my husband and I was going to California one year, and we've, we've gone several times, but this particular time we drove because I insisted. I thought it was going to be a wonderful trip. It was, in retrospect. But I wanted to see the terrain changing, you know, coming from, you know, Tennessee, going west. You know, I wanted to see how the how the terrain changed. And so everything was really boring until we got to um, the western part of Texas. And then things began to change. And, and I re but I remember we're going to California now. We were going to Los Angeles area. There were no signs saying anything about California. It would tell us like maybe where the next Texas uh, uh, stop, you know, biggest city is, you know, and maybe, you know, as, and we were going through Texas and you go through Arizona and it, and there's no, it was nothing saying that you're on your way to, to California. And then we got to, um, to uh, New Mexico and that was the first time we began to see a sign. Now this was years ago, but it's the first time we started seeing signs of how far California was. Now, all this time we traveled from Tennessee to New Mexico, we didn't see any signs that we were on the right track or how far California was or, or, or how close it was. We, we saw nothing. Now, we did have a map in our car because this is this predates your GPS days. There was a map in our car, but, but we had nothing to really tell us that, wow, we're almost there. And then you get to New Mexico and boom, there's a sign. And that sign told us, how far we were from California, from Los Angeles. We were a long way away. But I told my husband, hey, this is good. Now we have a sign. So I know now that we have the sign, we're closer. And then as we went through uh, New Mexico to Arizona, now the signs are definitely up there. And it's, and it's how we are now. We weren't in California yet, but we were getting close to California. And we went all the way to the, to uh, the Grand Canyon, and then we went south, going down through Phoenix, passing Sedona to Phoenix, down to Tucson, and went down. We got to uh, Interstate 10, I 10. Now we see a sign that says Granite, California. And we knew now, now we're on our way. However, we had to pass through lots of desert, lots and lots of desert to get to before we got to even Palm Springs. But the signs were there. And I knew now we're almost in Palm Springs. We're, we're not far at all. That's the way it is in time. Right now. Right now. Pay attention to the signs. Because for all these years, we did not see the signs. 
We've had two world wars, but we still didn't see the signs. And now we're seeing signs in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth. You're getting close. So if you're seeing the signs, this is preparation time. You understand what I'm saying? It's time to prepare your life because we're not that far away. The signs of the times, end time events, we're looking at them now. Just like I saw the sign that we were almost in California. I'm telling you, the signs are here now. And we don't know when, but we know now we're seeing the signs. And people are wondering, okay, the four horsemen, the four horsemen of the apocalypse ran yet, or what's going on? You see the signs, okay? Amen? So I'm going back here. And it says, for a light affliction, which is but for a moment, and God's time is a moment. We suffer. You might have had something last year for years. Still a moment. It's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. In these times of waiting, in these light affliction, it's almost sometimes feels like an insult. You go like, I've lost a loved one. I've I've almost died myself. I, I might be uh, incapacitated. I, I was in a car accident and I have terrible pain every day. Light affliction, everything. Light affliction. My husband left left me and left with a bunch of you know left me with a, with kids uh, or, or whatever. You know, my husband died or whatever might have happened in your life. Light affliction, and it said, which is but for a moment. But what about that moment? That moment that we're in right now is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. If we know how to wait on God, we will understand the weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, of his glory. We're in a time when God is giving us revelation of things. And we can't miss this moment. This, this moment is training us to reign. We're being trained to reign. If we can go through the hard stuff, if we can go through the hard place, you're being trained to reign as priests, kings and priests. You're already a priest if you're born again. But as kings and priests, ready for kingdom work. We have to understand the process that we, we, if we were not tested, if we were not tried, we would not be fit for the master's hand. But many of us have been tried and then God puts us into leadership positions in the kingdom of God now. And those things that we suffered, we build character, we build faith, and we learn how to wait. We are being trained to reign. And so many people don't understand why we go through afflictions. But these light, they, God called they light afflictions. These light afflictions. You're going to learn, you're going to learn something when you go through these things. I can look back over my life and things that happened over my life. I didn't learn anything when I was young. My, when my mom called herself and my dad preparing me for life. And I go out and where I got married at 19 years old. I was a baby. Of course, I thought I had it all together, but. I was soon to learn I didn't. And, and, and just, just growing up in a marriage, growing up as a mother, a young mother, as we began to have a family, learning how to love another person over myself. I love my husband, but I love me too. But when you have children, they will really teach you what love is about. Because they would test every nerve in your body. And these little perfect little bundles of joy that you bring home from the hospital. Or you have a home birth because I had both. And you see these beautiful little babies. And you think, oh my goodness, so, 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 oh, they're so beautiful. Pace yourself. Wait till they get to teenage years. I had seven. Some were really good. Nobody was perfect. Some, you know, really took me down through there. You know what? I remember many a days that I thought, I can't believe this little baby is the one that's giving me this trouble. Then I have to learn again. But these light afflictions, these are light afflictions I'm going through with them. I'm preparing them for adulthood. So the things that I had to discipline them in, they didn't like the discipline. I mean, who likes discipline? 
but they had to learn. They were being trained to get out of my house and to live a life on their own and to have their own families, which they all did. And so if I go back and look at my, at my, at my children and I dealt with them and the things that they did as teenagers and they had to be punished and, you know, I had to step to them and they were like, well, why you got to get on me like that? Yada, yada, yada. You know why? Because I'm, I'm preparing you for the time you walk out that door. When you walk out that door, I do not want to worry about you. I want to know that you are well, you are fine, you can think and you can reason. And that you will get the wisdom of God of how to maneuver through this life and stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and be able to understand what it means to stay in Christ. That's why I'm training you. And the hard things, your, your punishments, yeah, it's hard, but it's training you. And it's the same way with us. We learn. The, the, the Bible tells us that God disciplines those he loves. He chastises those he loves. If you've been a parent, you understand that. So we look at this exceeding and eternal weight of glory. We can't imagine it yet. It didn't say the weight of glory. It said exceeding and eternal. That means it's greater than you can ever imagine and it's longer than you can ever think. Glory that God has prepared for us. But we have to qualify in this life how to reign in the next. Even on this earth now, if, you, if God calls you into leadership in any area, you have to operate in character, godly character. You can't be over a ministry or a church or people in any way and you don't know how to treat them with love and respect. We have to understand godly character. And if you're, not, if you're in the secular realm in the world, you have to learn how to walk in, in the authority of being in the secular realm. You know, you can't, you wouldn't expect the, the, um, uh, the president of the United States to run red lights. I mean, he could do it and probably get away with it. But, but, but his character would say, hey, that's not good. You got to be a law, law, a, a law, uh, a person to abide the law even more so than we do because you are in a greater position. So you can't just run through red lights. What is that? So we all are under subjection of somebody's law, whether it's God's law or the laws of the land. And break the law, the law breaks you both ways. So we're learning to reign in authority. Those who are in the body of Christ, you are learning to reign and to train others to reign. And I pray to everybody who is in authority and in ministry in any kind of way that you are training other people to do what you do, that you're training them. So then when they are not with you, whatever the sphere of influence they have, they operate as God's anointed people wherever they are. Instead of thinking, well, I got to call my pastor and see if he can come pray. You pray. You pray. You got the Holy Spirit. You pray. Don't wait on somebody else to do it. You can do. That's, that's what we're here for. Jesus told his disciples to go and make disciples. We are supposed to go and make disciples. We are supposed to train others to do what? To reign, to rule, to walk in authority, to walk in dominion in this life. So that when Christ comes, we enter into a whole new set of glory that we have never known, we can't even imagine. I don't care your wildest imagination. You can't imagine. Verse 18 says, while we do not look at the things which are seen. You look at what's happening on the earth right now. If you constantly eat a diet of negativity, you'll never know what joy is. Yes, it's tough out here now. I mean, it is tough. This, this is a whole new world. We're, we are in a whole new different. We've never seen a world like we see now. But God never expected us to just sit back and wallow in tears and fear about what we see. No, 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 no. That's not your time. It's just why we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Well, what's not seen? The things of the spirit. The joy that he wants us to walk in. The peace that he wants us to have. And we can't have that if we're constantly eating a steady diet of negativity. We won't have joy and peace. And the love. You know, whatever you do, 
it all boils down, boils down. Do you know how to really love? And that means love people that's not like you. See, in this life, we have to, we, we are training to be overcomers. And there is in the kingdom of God, no black or white, brown, yellow, Jew, Greek, none of that. One body, but one body. One body, not concerned about age or sex, but concerned about the fact that we are all, we've all been anointed, set apart, sanctified, justified by God to be ambassadors on this earth at this time getting ourselves and other people ready to rule and reign. To rule where? In the kingdom of God. But even here on this earth now, whatever position that you're in, if you're, if you're a supervisor on your job, if you are a, a, a pastor, if you are a CEO, you know, you're in corporate somewhere, wherever you, wherever you work, you work at a fast food restaurant, you, you know, you're a manager or something of that nature, you should be ruling in, in, a, in a place of respecting those who are under you. There should be respect. That's what you, we're supposed to teach. We, can you respect someone else? Can you love someone else? Are you concerned about those who God has placed you over? Are you concerned about their welfare? Do we pray for these? Do we pray for those that's with us? You know, God is, we, we have work to do. We can't get caught up in what the stars, Hollywood stars or, 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 or people out here in this world, what they're doing. That's not what God wants us to do. Call, get caught up in Jesus. Get all wrapped up in him. These other things are just distractions. We, we're, we're concerned about what someone thinks. They're flesh and blood just like you are. What difference does it make what they think? What difference? Absolutely none. Absolutely no difference. With shouldn't matter to you whatsoever what they think. Because our thoughts are not man's thoughts. Our thoughts should be, what, what does God say? We are supposed to have the mind of Christ. We are supposed to think like him. He is love. He is love. And he is life. And that's what we should be, the light and life. You know, sometimes, I remember I was young and, and, and you know, some people would come in the party. Oh, hey, oh, here they come. They, they, they're the life of the party. Well, they might have been life of the party. But you're supposed to be life for real. When people should be able to come to you, they're sick and you pray for them. If they're down and you lift them up with encouraging words, if they feel like they're going to give up, pull them back up. Give them hope. Give them a word. Give them hope. Tell them who they are, who God created them to be. Nobody's a failure. Nobody is. And if they've messed up, show them how to clean it up and get Get up, dust off your knees and get up. Let's be about helping people pray for those who have no clue. These young people out here killing, pray for these young people. They have no idea that if they are caught, they are giving up their life. <sighs> they don't know what prison is about. Young people going into prisons, 15, 16, 17. I could tell you about it, but I'm not because I'm going to keep this thing clean. For the things which you're seeing are temporary. Temporary. What I see is temporary. You know, famous people come and go. You know, they got an expiration date like everything else. You can't get caught up in what some person say. You know, people, people build up hatred because of what some other person say. Why? Have your own mind. Have your own wits about yourself. The opinion of other people should not matter to you. The only opinion that you need to think about is what is God's word? What is his opinion? What does he say about things? What, what flesh and blood say? It has no value unless it is righteous. If someone's giving their opinion with, about what they think, okay, so let them. So you think that good. You know, clap for yourself. But we shouldn't get all beat out of shape because someone says something crazy. And it's just ridiculous to me that everybody would do a YouTube or, or something, uh, a Facebook or something about what somebody else said. And who are they? They're flesh and blood just like the rest of us. Hmm. The things that we see are temporary. 
Everything we see, even this world, everything is temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. We can't see it yet. We can't see the spirit realm. But that is eternal. There's a whole spirit realm around us that we can't see. But if you're in Christ, you can really experience it. And if the devil is, is the one you follow, you follow Satan, you'll get, you will experience it there too. Who wants that? Let's get back into a place of understanding what God has called us to do. God is calling us to the deep. We are called to the deep. Those deep things of God. Don't get caught up in what man says. It says, so we know, verse chapter 5, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent, so we call it tent or tabernacle, this tent is destroyed. It can be destroyed. It will be destroyed. This is temporary. It rots. Spirit leaves. It rots. If it is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And then it says, for in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is which is from heaven. That's what we, that's the goal. That's why you can't get caught up in stuff out here. Because the goal is to get caught up in our habitation, which is from heaven. A new body, a glorified body. We qualify here. You qualify here and it will determine where you go next. If indeed having been clothed, we should not be found naked. We will not be found naked because we're going to be clothed in the spirit, a new spirit, a, 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 a heavenly, a heavenly body, not subject to destroy, destruction anymore. I want you to think about how you live your life. That this, everything in this world is going to pass away. You get caught up in this stuff here. It doesn't mean anything. Get caught up in Christ. Get caught up in Jesus. Get caught up in the things of God. Get caught up in love. Get caught up in peace. Get caught up in the right thing. And your life will be something that is pleasurable. I pray that this, this message has blessed you. It don't matter what goes on around you. It matters what's that eternal word. God has given you. I pray that you're blessed. I pray that you understand that God has your back. Be exceedingly blessed. Amen.